Universal Introduction. In this video, you will learn about the Universal Introduction Rule. Universal Introduction varies slightly depending on which logic system you are using. In the system we are using in this tutorial, arbitrary constants are permitted. Universal Introduction says that if you have an original first order formula with a constant, you can infer a universally quantified formula that replaces that constant from the original formula with a variable. For example, in this deduction, we can infer for all x fx from fa to universal introduction. Now, this might not seem sensible. Assuming f means is a frog and a means Alice, how can we infer from Alice is a frog at line 2 to everything is a frog at line 3? Well, we can only do this if the reference to Alice in line 2 is arbitrary. That is, universal introduction only works if it doesn't matter what constant we stick in for a. In other words, whatever name we stick in for Alice, the predicate that is a frog must be true of it. Let's suppose we have a domain with three objects, Alice, Bob, and Chuck. We also have the statement, Alice is a frog. Here's the tricky part. We can infer for all x, x is a frog, if and only if it doesn't matter whom we stick in for Alice. So, our statement, Alice is a frog, may be true. But we could have just as easily stuck in Bob is a frog or Chuck is a frog, and we would have true statements. That is, we actually have Alice in our statement here in line 2, but we could have just as easily asserted FB or FC. There are three restrictions we place on universal introduction to ensure that we can make such a substitution. That is, to make sure that A is arbitrary. First, the constant must not appear in any premise or undischarged assumption. Second, the variable you introduce in the inferred formula cannot already exist in that formula. Third, you must replace every instance of the constant. Consider the following proof. All frogs are green for all x if fx then gx. Alice is a frog, F-A. Therefore, all things are green for all x, G-X. This shouldn't work. Just because all frogs are green and Alice is a frog doesn't mean that all things are green. And we can see that it indeed does not work. Let's use universal elimination on line one to get if Alice is a frog, then Alice is green. And let's use conditional elimination on lines 3 and 2 to get Alice is green. Now, let's try doing for all x, gx as our conclusion and justify it with for universal introduction. As you can see, this is flagged as an error. The reason is that the constant a, which we used to generate the universal introduction from line 4, appears on line 2. And 2 is a premise. This breaks the first restriction of universal introduction, that the constant must not appear in any premise or undischarged assumption. How to fix this proof? Well, in order for it to work, let's delete the justification from the conclusion and let's adjust line 2 to be a universal. So now we have as our premises all frogs are green and everything is a frog and from this we should be able to get the conclusion everything is green. We are going to insert a line after line 3 in our proof 
to get Alice is a Frog from Everything is a Frog. Now we adjust the justification on line 5 to 3, 4 arrow elimination. And now we can get 5 universal introduction as our conclusion. Notice that the restriction on universal elimination did its job in this proof. Remember that the constant, in this case a, representing Alice, has to be arbitrary. And as we can see from the universal elimination on line 2, we could have picked any constant, not just Alice, and the proof would have worked. That is, the selection of Alice was arbitrary. That is how universal introduction works.